Good morning, and welcome to another morning of Daily Jesus. And today we continue reading through the book of 2 Kings from chapters 21 to 25. Today's readings open with the, with, with the king, the king of Judah, by the name of Manasseh. What kind of king do you suppose King Manasseh was? He was a king that did much evil in the eyes of the Lord. Unlike his father, King Hezekiah, as we read last week, Manasseh devoted himself to idol worship. And to add to this, his son, King Amon, also perpetrates much evil as well. However, amidst all this, one rather appropriate king emerges, King Josiah. King Josiah, according to the law, actually um, takes action on the driving out of idol worship from the land and destroys the temple that was previously used for idol worship as well. Something that no other king had been able to do or had done before previously. Through this, Josiah is able to reform the people of Judah back to the Lord. However, this reform does not seem to extend much further than this from up to what we read today. When King Josiah dies in battle, the, king, the people of Judah are now put at risk of perishing. Moving forward, during the time of the last king, King Zedekiah, Jerusalem falls and the people are driven out to Babylon in exile. At this point in time, it seems as though all is lost for the Israelites. However, the book of 2 Kings does not end with bad news. The king of Babylon releases King Jehoiakim, who had been held captive and, and shows kindness to him. And through this, we are able to see that God is bestowing mercy and grace to his people faithfully and in an enduring manner. God is faithful to his chosen people, bound to him in covenant. And we will soon read this today. So keeping in this in mind, let's continue reading through the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 21 Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hesabah, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the despicable practices of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places that Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed, and he erected altars for Baal and made an Asherah as Ahab king of Israel had done, and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he burnt his son as an offering, and used fortune-telling and omens, and dealt with mediums, and dealt with necromancers. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. And the carved image of Asherah that he had made, he set in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not cause the feet of Israel to wander any more out of the land that I gave to their fathers, if only they will be careful to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they did not listen, and Manasseh led them astray to do more evil than the nations had done whom the Lord destroyed before the people of Israel. And the Lord said by his servants, the prophets, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these abominations and has done things more evil than all that the Amorites did who were before him and has made Judah also to sin with his idols, therefore, thus says the Lord, The God of Israel, behold, I am bringing upon Jerusalem and Judah such disaster that the ears of everyone who hears of it will tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria and the plumb line of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. And I will forsake the remnant of my heritage and give them into the hand of their enemies. And they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies, because they have done what is evil in my sight and have provoked me into anger since the day their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. 
Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, besides the sin that he made Judah to sin, so that they did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and the sin that he committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his house, in the garden of Uzzah and Ammon, his son reigned in his place. Ammon was twenty-two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Hazul of Jotba. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as Manasseh his father had done. He walked in all the ways which his father walked, and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped them. He abandoned the Lord, the God of his fathers, and did not walk in the way of the Lord. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him, and put the king to death in his house. But the people of the land struck down all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah his son reigned in his place. Chapter 22 Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adiah of Bozkath, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in the ways of David his father, and he did not turn aside to the right or to the left. In the eighteenth year of King Josiah, the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, son of Meshulam, the secretary of the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money that has been brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the threshold have collected from the people. And let it be given into the hand of the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let them give it to the workmen who are at the house of the Lord, repairing the house, that is, to the carpenters and to the builders and to the masons. And let them use it for buying timber and coral stone to repair the house. But no accounting shall be asked from them for the money that is delivered into their hand, for they deal honestly." And Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the secretary came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hands of the workmen who have the oversight of the house of the Lord. Then Shaphan the secretary told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes, and the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Achim the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the secretary, and Asiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that have been found. For great is the wrath of God that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, and Icom, and Akbor, and Saphon, and Ashiah went to Kulda the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, son of Haras, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they talked with her. And she said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Tell the man who sent you to me, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring disaster upon this place, 
and upon its inhabitants, all the words of the book that the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and have made offerings to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be kindled against this place, and it will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall you say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, regarding the words that you have heard, because your heart was penitent, and you humbled yourself before the Lord, when you heard how I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolate and a curse, and you have torn your clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace, and your eyes shall not see all the disaster that I will bring upon this place. And they brought back words to the king. Chapter 23 Then the king sent, and all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul, to perform the words of his covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in the covenant. And the king commanded Hilkah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the threshold to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels made for Baal, for Asherah and for all the host of heaven. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. And he disposed the priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to make offerings in the high places at the cities of Judah and around Jerusalem. Those also who burned incense to Baal to the sun and the moon and the consultations and all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the Asherah from the house of the Lord outside Jerusalem to the brook of Kidron and burnt it at the brook of Kidron and beat it to dust, and cast the dust of it upon the graves of the common people. And he broke down the house of the male cult prostitutes, who were in the house of the Lord, where the women wove hangings for the Asherah. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah, and defiled the high places where the priests had made offerings, from Jeba to Bathsheba, and he broke down the high places of the gates that were at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on ones left at the gate of the city. However, the priests of the high places did not come up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they ate unleavened bread among their brothers. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, that no one might burn his son or his daughter as an offering to Molech. And he removed the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the son at the entrance of the house of the Lord, by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the precincts. And he buried the chariots of the son with fire, and the altars on the roof of the upper chamber of Ahaz which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars that Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, he pulled down and broke in pieces, and cast the dust of them into the book Kidron. And the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem to the south of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon the king of Israel had built for Ashtoreth the abomination of the Sidonians, and for Chemosh the abomination of Moab, and for Milcom the abomination of the Ammonites, 
And he broke in pieces the pillars and cut down the asherim and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar at Bethel, the high place erected by Jeroboam, the son of Netbat, who made Israel to sin, that altar with the high place he pulled down and burned, reducing it to dusk. He also burned the Asherah. And as Josiah turned, he saw the tombs there on the mount, and he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled it, according to the word of the Lord that the man of God proclaimed, who had predicted these things. Then he said, What is that monument that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and predicted these things that you have done against the altar at Bethel. And he said, Let him be. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came out of Samaria. And Josiah removed all the shrines also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which kings of Israel had made, provoking the Lord to anger. He did to them according to all that he had done at Bethel. And he sacrificed all the priests of high places who were there on the altars and burned human bones on them. Then he returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, Keep the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of the covenant. For no such Passover has been kept since the days of the judges who judged Israel, or during all the days of the kings of Israel, or of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was kept to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah put away the mediums and the necromancers and the household gods and the idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, that he might establish the words of the law that were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. Before him there was no king like him, who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. Still the Lord did not turn from the burning of his great wrath, by which his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the proclamations with which Manasseh had provoked him. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel. And I will cast off this city that I have chosen, Jerusalem, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up to the king of Assyria, to the river Euphrates. King Josiah went to meet him, and Pharaoh Necho killed him at Megiddo as soon as he saw him. And his servants carried him dead in a chariot from Megiddo and brought him to Jerusalem and buried him in his own tomb. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz the son of Josiah and anointed him and made him king in his father's place. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bonds at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and laid on the land a tribute of hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim the son of Josiah king in the place of Josiah his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of 
the land from everyone according to his assessment to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebeda, the daughter of Pedea of Ruma. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Chapter 24 In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant for three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldeans, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the Ammonites. And sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by his servants the prophets. Surely this came upon Judah at the command of the Lord to remove them out of his sight, for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he had done, and also for the innocent blood that he had shed. For he filled Israel with innocent blood, and the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the deeds of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin his son reigned in his place. And the king of Egypt did not come again out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken all that belonged to the king of Egypt from the brook of Egypt to the river Euphrates. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up to Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to the city while his servants were besieging it. And Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, gave himself up to the king of Babylon, himself and his mother and his servants and his officials and his palace officials. The king of Babylon took him prisoner in the eighth year of his reign and carried off all the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold in the temple of the Lord, which Solomon king of Israel had made, as the Lord had foretold. He carried away all Jerusalem and all the officials and all the mighty men of Valor, ten thousand captives and all the craftsmen and the smiths. None remained except the poorest people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiachin to Babylon. The king's mother, the king's wives, his officials, and the chief men of the land he took into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon all the men of Vayor, seven thousand, and the craftsmen and the metal workers, one thousand, all of them strong and fit for war. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, Jehoiachin's uncle, king in his place, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. And Jedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Chapter 25 And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege work all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. 
Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between the two walls, by the king's garden. And the Chaldeans were around the city, and they went in the direction of the Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they captured the king and brought him to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they passed sentence on him. They slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him in chains, and took him to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, that was the seventeenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the bodyguard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, and he burnt the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burnt down. And all the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down the walls around Jerusalem. And the rest of the people who were left in the city, and the deserters who had deserted to the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the multitude, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried into exile. But the captain of the guard left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. And the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried the bronze to Babylon. And they took away the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the dishes for incense and all the vessels of bronze used in the temple service, the fire pans also and the bowls. What was of gold the captain of the guard took away as gold and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea and the stands that Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these vessels was beyond weight. The height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and on it was a capital of bronze. The height of the capital was three cubits. A latticework and pomegranates, all of bronze, were all around the capital, and the second pillar had the same with the lattice work. And the captain of the guard took Sariah the chief priest and Zephaniah the second priest and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war and five men of the king's council who were found in the city, and the secretary of the commander of the army who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah was taken to exile out of its land. And over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had left, he appointed Giladiah the son of Achim, son of Saphan, governor. Now when all the captains and their men heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Giladiah governor, they came with their men to Giladiah at Mizpah, namely Ishmael the son of Nathaniah, and Johanan the son of Kariah, and Sariah the son of Tenhumeth the Natothatite, and Jezaniah the son of the Micaiahite. And Gedaliah swore to them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid because of the Chaldean officials. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be with you. But in the seventh month, Ishmael the son of Nathaniah, son of Elishama, of the royal family, came with ten men and struck down Gedaliah and put him to death along with the Jews and the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. Then all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the forces arose and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. 
And in the thirty-seventh year of the exile of Jehoiachin king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, evil Merodach king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, graciously freed Jehoiachin king of Judah from prison. And he spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table, and for his allowance a regular allowance was given him by the king according to his daily needs as long as he lived. Amen. Keeping what we've just read in mind, here are some application questions that will help you meditate on what we've just read. Firstly, what is something that you are learning new or are being reminded of again in today's readings and through today's passage? And secondly, what comes to mind when looking at the series of bad and the good kings that succeed one another today? And so thirdly, are you someone living in evil, perpetrating evil in the eyes of the Lord, or do you reform evil with goodness? And fourthly, what comes to mind when looking at God's unwavering faithfulness to His people bound in covenant? And finally, as always, how is the passage today leading you to a moment of conviction and repentance? Meditating on these questions, let's all end today's session with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we uh, thank you and praise you this morning that through the book of Second Kings, as we conclude, um, you've shown us just how much of a faithful and unwavering God you are. Um, though it all seems lost for the Israelites, you've shown um, that through uh, your daily mercies that you are indeed still with them. You are God Emmanuel. And come today, you've shown us through Jesus Christ that you are still the same God that saved um, and same God that worked through King Hezekiah, Josiah, um, through all the successing kings to this day. And Father, we look towards the one eternal king, uh, faithful king who saved us from sin uh, and, uh, and invited us back into communion um, and fellowship with you. So, Father, allow us to be able to live according now to that calling as one of your chosen people. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do hope and pray that you are all empowered by God's daily mercies today. Embrace Jesus. Embrace people. <laughs>